Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending August 2nd. First up, this was sent to me by my friend Bob, 1954 Shadow. NASA's Mars 2020 rover gains seven new instruments for exploration. Um, among them, now this is going to be a chassis that's uh, pretty much identical to the Curiosity rover that's on Mars right now. So they've already got the, the basic um, bugs worked out of it and everything, and it's uh, tested. So all they're going to do is um, add about seven more instruments to it. Among them is going to be an instrument that produces oxygen, which is one of your main ingredients to rocket fuel. You're going to need to set up before we launch astronauts there, which is still on a schedule of around 2030. This rover is scheduled to launch in 2020 and land there in 2021. And if the schedule stays on track, the astronauts will land on 2030. And what they want is to test out this system of producing oxygen and then possibly about two years before the astronauts get to Mars, send a, big, a bigger unit, about 100 times bigger, that can produce quite a bit more oxygen. This small test unit is going to produce about, I think this is something like three quarters of an ounce per hour of oxygen, which will be fine for just running a test and stuff like that. What I still see missing among the seven different instruments they have on there, and they have some pretty good uh, photography instruments in there, including a really nice panoramic camera, but what still is missing is they still, for some reason, cannot come up with the idea of... Uh, you know, adding maybe about two ounces of weight to the craft and sending a microphone up there so that we can get some kind of uh, idea of what's going on. I mean, you could even have a microphone that could hear beyond the human range into the lower and the higher frequencies. I mean, to me, just because it's so cheap and easy to build, it, I don't know why they keep launching these craft there, not including such a simple instrument like that that could possibly uh, give us some extra information on what's going on in Mars. It does, you know, it does, the atmosphere is only 3% of Earth, but it does have an atmosphere. And if it has an atmosphere, there are sounds of some sort. And next up, this is from The Telegraph. U.S. aid worker infected by Ebola arrives in America for treatment. Evidently, they are bringing back uh, not just patients with Ebola from Africa, but also AIDS workers. I guess there are two of them that are very sick. And because this airplane's only outfitted to take one patient at a time, one person has to wait and another person uh, gets to come. So... And they're both evidently in critical condition. I guess it's a male and a female aid worker. But uh, I'm just wondering, too, uh, a lot of people are getting kind of concerned about this bringing Ebola patients. And the doctors keep saying, oh, uh, you know, it's all under a controlled situation. It's not going to leave the uh, hospitals. It's not going to leave the controlled areas and spread. But um, even if it does, I mean, I don't see it being an epidemic in the United States in the future because, yeah, we do have medical moder modern medical treatment. But, boy, could you imagine if even... Uh, 12 people just in the general public walking around, you know, not having any direct contact with us all of a sudden come down with Ebola in the United States. Our uh, news media and reporters are going to go crazy over it. And, uh, you know, maybe not just the, the concern that it's going to spread because it may never, but just the fact that, you know, why did we bring it back here? So something interesting to think about. And next up, if you were on Friday, like I was, if you were on Facebook, um, you noticed for uh, around 11 o'clock, I think, my time, uh, 12 o'clock Eastern time, Facebook started just uh, not working, basically not functioning, freezing up, uh, you know, just, uh, but but this article is kind of interesting because this is from uh, the Los Angeles County Police Department. They were getting calls from people on Facebook that their Facebook was down and not working, so finally, um, Sergeant, this guy named Sergeant Brink, he had to actually paste on Facebook, and I guess he also put it on Twitter. It's not a law enforcement issue. Please don't call us about it being down. We don't know when Facebook will be back up. Yeah, it's uh, the Internet's really becoming a major part of some people's lives to where they think if the Internet's down, it's a police matter, and they have to call the police emergency number. So that was pretty interesting. It was from channel4kmov.com out of St. Louis was the report. And last up here, Illinois considers requirements for big motorcycles because um, there's a new license requirements. Right now, we only divide it into two um, different types. You have an uh, L license for under uh, one under under 150 cc's, and then 150 cc's and above is an M class license. And they're thinking that they want to divide it up now and maybe have another class of license for 600 cc's and above. Uh, personally, myself, I'm I'm against it. I mean, there are so many ways around this, too. They're concerned because people right now are using smaller bikes to take their tests and then buying bigger bikes. Yeah, that may be true. But even if you make the class of 600, somebody can get a lightweight 600 bike. I mean, I've seen single-cylinder 600 bikes that are um, probably about the same size as a 
um, maybe my Vulcan 500 or something like that, which is a light, nimble bike, go and take their test on a 600 bike like that, and then go out and get a Goldwing. It just it doesn't translate. There, there are so many different factors, so many different types of motorcycles. Not to mention the fact that in Illinois, we don't really have the money to make things even more complicated. They don't have the money right now to uh, take care of all the students that want to get into the driver safety courses, and they even mentioned in this too. Okay, right now they teach the the the, the motorcycle safety courses with the smaller bikes. If you have to make a whole another set of courses and get more teachers for the larger bikes, how much expense is that going to be too? I mean, if it's all about the safety and the training and stuff like that, to me, it's all, it's always better to do the uh, education part of it than to uh, make it th make things more complicated. But I know a lot of you live in different areas, even in some other states, they have. Uh, motorcycles divided up into all kinds of different classes and stuff like that and different types of tests. I know over my friends over in the UK, they have to go through just an enormous amount of stuff more than we do. I mean, basically, if you can uh, pass the written and the uh, skills test here, you can go out and buy anything you want. So if you want, give me your thoughts on that. So uh, that's it for this week. Take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.